Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews, back with another nocturnal review. Um, I have to say really quickly, I apologize if I sound stuffy. At the time that this video is being recorded, I am battling my allergies. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, I will not be battling my allergies, so, anyway. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody? I hope everybody's doing great. I hope everybody is, you know, um staying safe in these turbulent times, and, uh, yeah, that's really all, just, yeah, just like that, is all I can really say about that stuff. But anyway, let's talk about some lighter hard stuff on this horror tube video. Um, continuing celebrating 55 years of Barnabas Collins, which the 55th anniversary is just around the corner, in a matter of days, I do believe, if I have my days right. By the time this video goes up, we are reviewing um, a documentary this time, something a little different, and it is called Dark Shadows and Beyond, The Jonathan Frid Story, which came out in 2021, uh, last year. It is directed by uh, Mary o O'Leary. I'm, I'm O'Leary, O'Leary. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I think it's O'Leary. Um... But she did a fine job with this documentary. Um, so this documentary, of course, is about Jonathan Frid, who, you know, was Barnabas Collins for, you know, uh, 19, from 1966, uh, sorry, from 1967 to uh, early 1971, before he switched characters to uh, Bramwell Collins. Um, so this documentary tells the life story of Canadian actor Jonathan Frid his work in theater, television, especially, you know, his success as Barnabas Collins on Dark Shadows, and in film. Um, the documentary goes behind the scenes uh, as Barnabas on the show, his feelings about the role, and uh, how it all came to an end. Um, hint, hint, House of Dark Shadows had something to do with it, but we're, I'm not going to spoil that for you. Um, because, you know, hopefully you kind of already knew a little bit about that, but I learned more about that myself. Um, his life beyond how he, uh, learned a new language and how he left, uh, film to return to the stage. It also follows into his, uh, his later years, uh, joining in in the, some of the Dark Shadows festivals and also his, uh, declining health and his last few years, including... A little bit on uh, his work that he did on the 2012 film based on Dark Shadows, and that's all I'm going to say about that film. There are some people in the documentary who have some things to say about that, and uh, David Selby gives a good um, kind of look at what they were dealing with when they when they did that. You know, I thought his words were rather interesting in what he had to say. So you know. Um, I want to backtrack just a little bit to his film thing. I didn't realize that he was in more films than just House of Dark Shadows. I just thought that was his only movie. No, he'd been in a few more, and at least another horror film. I can't remember for sure if it said any more than that. But, um, yeah, the the film that he was in, I don't remember the actress's name, but she was, uh, she played, um, Ross and Monica's uh, mother on Friends, she played his wife in this, uh, horror film that, uh, I'm not going to spoil the name for two reasons. One, I'm not going to spoil it for you, two, is you should really watch the documentary, and two, I can't remember it, so, and it's not going to appear anywhere on the screen, but yeah. So, and also the, the language thing, how he learned a foreign language, it has to do with him promoting Dark Shadows after the show was off the air, in another country, and that was a very interesting piece of the documentary itself. Um, there was some things I kind of wish that they had talked a little bit about that they didn't, and that would include uh, him playing the part of Bramwell Collins and what he thought of it, you know, and what others thought of it, you know, kind of what, you know, I'm surely he would have said something to somebody about it, I don't know. They didn't cover he and Louis Edmonds' uh, friendship, which I was kind of curious about. I was hoping they would. They didn't really say much on that at all. Because there's all these pictures of, you know, him hanging out with, you know, Louis Edmonds, you know, like, you know, I think there's some at the beach and some at, like, Louis Edmonds' home whatnot. I, I've always been kind of curious, you know, about their friendship. 
The documentary didn't cover that, so I was just like, oh well, maybe there wasn't much to say. Um, another uh, thing that I wish that they had gone into is uh, his return to the role of Barnabas Collins, and I think it was 2010 think it was maybe it was 2011 when he played Barnabas in the Night Whispers um from Big Finish Productions which takes place in it, it's canon in with Dark Shadows with you know with the show it takes place in the year um 1995 I think yes 1995 uh was on Stuart Manning's timeline that he'd made before they even recorded the uh, uh some of the other Big Finish Productions stuff after he left he had made a timeline, and he's the writer of that one. But, um, anyway, it's a great documentary. Do check it out. The other documentary that's about Dark Shadows is really cool, too. It's called Master of Dark Shadows. It's about Dan Curtis. I may do a review on it sometime. But both these documentaries are actually on Tubi, at least at the time that I'm recording this. It's been a bit since I watched it, but um, it's excellent. I give it five stars. Uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, five stars. Even with the things I wish they had talked about, I still get five stars because it was worth it. Um, I guess the things that I was curious about are rather trivial. So, but yeah, it's a great documentary. Do check it out. It's on Tubi. I know you can get it on, uh, I'm sure you can get it at other streaming services. Um, I know it's available on DVD and Blu-ray, so do check it out. Anyway, um, that's all I got. So I'll see you next time with another video, and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.